Yo, Joes and agents of Cobra Command. You're listening to episode 320 of G.I. Joburg. My name is Steve. I'm joined by Paul. Hello, Paul. Hello. How's it, Big Force? How's it, Steve? And Rob. Oh. Hey, guys. Hello. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Hey, it's a good Friday for South Africans. It's a, <laughs> it's a normal Saturday for Steven. Ooh. We oh, wait, are no. we recording it? this show. Yes, it's still good Friday <laughs> for me as well. It's just gone uh, 10.30 in Australia, Brisbane time. It's just after 2.30 for you guys in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, but you will be listening to this on perhaps Easter Monday or Sunday if you're living in the past. Or sometime in the future because this is one of, <laughs> this is one of our pre-recorded episodes where we focus in on a specific toy that the three of us all possess and have some mm. special connection to and for the first mm -hmm. time ever we're not focusing on a vehicle toy we oh are goodness. going to do snake eyes of course yeah, snake eyes. the first action figure focus of this series had to be the man in black himself but Perhaps not the version that you would most likely find people beating their drums and um, throwing ticker tape and uh, bringing out the marching band for. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the 1989 version of Snake Eyes. We're going to be cracking on in this episode. Why? Giving ratings about and discussing his nitty gritty, his greeblies, his Ooh. eccentricities. Ooh. And I think the most important question to ask you both. Why 1989 Snake Eyes? Why? He was the only one um, we got. <laughs> Didn't we have any Rob, choice? <laughs> Rob nailed Yeah, but Rob did kind of nail it. I mean, yes, we did get 85 Snake Eyes. Um, but this bad boy over here, this was Snake Eyes, as a lot of us knew him. Like uh, yeah. in the schoolyard and everything. I only knew about the other Snake Eyes much later uh, on in my life when I was eight years old. <laughs> but this was the one that you could find everywhere when we were little, when we were too stupid to appreciate how awesome this was. Well, well I appreciate him from the start, from the oh, very yeah. start. You know, he is uh, my absolute favorite figure. Um, like you, know, you can tell, I played with him a lot. His legs are like wibbly wobbly. His right arm kind of does a thing as well. He likes. Okay, well, okay. no solution. Rob invented today. ninja action, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, one of my absolute favorites because I just could not stop playing with this guy. He just looks awesome, no, you know. And no, it's the magic. Your mother got you scoop because mm -hmm. he was the most non-violent looking GI Joe figure uh, on the card. He had a camera as his primary accessory. Exactly. Um, Snake Eyes came with nothing but instruments for dealing death. How did you mm -hmm. spin that one? I don't know. I think he just looked cool. My mom just accepted that he was the coolest looking figure on the shelf. Um, which is, I think, has always been the case. You know, he's the, the standout. He's, he's, I wouldn't say plain, but you know, he's just like he's a very straightforward design, which I think is obviously what worked out in the favor of the original Snakers as well. Like he stood out because he was this uniquely badass looking figure on the shelf. And that's why people, we've always gravitated towards Snake Eyes. And it doesn't matter which Snake Eyes version it is, well, maybe the fourth version. Um, but, you know, <laughs> obviously the earlier ones, like he would be the standout figure on the shelf. And you know, she was like, "Okay, he looks and cool." And somewhat of like a schoolyard yeah. status symbol. Yeah, I mean, sure. if you had snake eyes, mm -hmm. you were the coolest mofo in the school. Like, I mean, at least for that play session, everyone else had to settle for recoil, or yeah. you know, yeah. sort of recoil. another sci-fi, another really Downtown. yeah, just a, a face in the crowd, another green army man. If you had snake yeah. eyes, you had the man, you were the coolest guy. Ever in For the me, world. the story started at least with this version of Snake Eyes in the Christmas of 1990. Whoa! A five or six year old. I was. I, would, I just turned six. Yeah. So six year old Steve, Christmas morning, gets carded 1989 Snake Eyes, and I've told the story a couple of times, and I I, I can't really claim that I have um, clear memories of the time because I think I've kind of told the story that maybe we invited friends over and the friend was like this is the coolest action figure you've got I'm going to make him mine and so it sailed yeah. off into someone's pocket but 
I don't know if that's the truth. I might have just been making up a fun story. Maybe From that picture you showed, it looked like it was actually your sister's toy. Um, so maybe she kept it. Maybe. I should ask you, Tess. Um, perhaps <laughs> I just played with it so much during that particular summer holiday that it disappeared into the playgrounds and parks of those heady days of the, you know, the early 90s. Um, and never, I mean, I don't have any memories of it beyond that Christmas season. So I guess I just I loved it mm. intensely. But it, too much. And then, you know, when you met me, period. I had one. And you were like, oh, it's so cool. There you go. So once you, you came into cool my life, Rob, I, um, I only kept you around because you gave me access to that snake eyes I so beloved. I know, exactly. <laughs> I knew it. I knew that was the reason. <laughs> but... Um, it turn, turns out like like this toy does come with like a few horror stories, and I feel like this is the episode to at least chronicle right. that because I know I've mentioned this in, in uh, future episodes or future future episodes, <laughs> past episodes of the podcast. Um, so I yeah I remember getting this figure. I remember taking him off the shelf, and and then I remember assembling the trisectional staff. I don't know why I remember that, but anyway, I do. And then. Um, Fast forward a few, like maybe maybe a year, maybe two years. I don't know. Um, this figure was with like a lot of other GI Joes that I had, and a friend of mine came over to my house. His name is Enrico. You bastard. Um, <laughs> and I thought, well, you know what, this kid. I mean, he was a bit of an awkward dude and whatever. And I thought, okay, well, I'll let him play with like Snake Eyes because I love this toy, and I thought it'll be fine. And this little shit managed to somehow pull him apart. That his O ring was mm. broken. Um, oh. And at the time. I I was like I kind of annoyed by that, but I remember collecting the parts and keeping them safe, so, in the hopes that one day I could maybe find a replacement O ring or something like that to fix it with. And then over time, the parts just went missing, man. Like the weapons and everything. I think the only thing mm -hmm. I had left of this guy was actually his upper torso, which then, you know, when when I met David, David also had this guy, and it was like so cool to to be reunited with this Snake Eyes figure, and to really really appreciate this toy again. It kind of made me really really regret um what had happened to my to my original um but yeah then as things went on with the customizing stuff i donated that upper body that upper torso to dave because he then repurposed it and used it for some custom character i think he did like a red snake eyes or something out of this anyway um but yeah it's, it's kind of an interesting thing this toy like i find there's a lot of horror stories with snake eyes if i speak to other people i know with G.I. Joe, they often bring up the word snake eyes. They're like, I had a snake eyes figure and then the dog got it. Or uh, <laughs> we were playing, uh, we were throwing them on the roof or something stupid. It's some ridiculous crap that people do to their snake eyes figures. But well, chances were always good it. that when you were picking your team between you and your friends, someone was bound to take snake eyes as their primary. Yeah. So the to. figure was yep. always going to see action every <laughs> single time, no matter what the mission, no matter what the weather. No matter what the setting, Snake Eyes always came out of the toy box. So, in terms of the actual history of the plastic in our hands, Rob, you've got your childhood one. Yeah, bravo, original, number one. He survived. Paul, where's yours from? <laughs> because mine is from South Africa as well. This was bought at a local seller. With his amusement. Mine, oh, hmm. I believe back I in time toys now. Yeah, I I believe this one is actually from Greece. Okay. Ah. Yeah, I bought it from uh, one of the well, from that famous Greek seller that we used to buy a lot of stuff from on eBay. Mm. Um, I can't think of his name right now. The but two South yeah. Africans and a Greek roll into a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, let's um, get into the media exposure of this look because it is quite alarming to me that for a character as popular as Snake Eyes a central character of G.I. Joe and a popular seller at that. And the arrival of the Deke miniseries Operation Dragonfire in 1989, showcasing Rock and Roll V2, Stalker V2, all these 1989 figures. L l yep, say no more. St scoop, scoop, occupying a massive one. role um, in Operation Dragonfire. Nary a snake eyes to be seen. Mm. This look yeah. was completely ignored by the cartoon series. The only Snake Eyes look to then debut was his V4. Uh, yeah. In yeah. 1992, I mean, this is... Well, no, so this is the first... I think towards the end of the first season of Deke in 91, 
we had the 1991 red goggles snake eyes. Yeah, so, I feel like this is the most underappreciated version, actually, of, of Snake Eyes. Like, even if I'm thinking to the comic books, and we haven't started talking about it now, but, like, I definitely remember version 4 being in the comics. Obviously, version mm -hmm. 1 and 2. Well, 2 being, like, I mean, if you're a fan of 2, you're, you're the happiest Snake Eyes fan in the world because he's literally the version that's in everything all the time, everything. always and forever. Version 3. And let's, not for so much. and let's not forget about, like, what I like to call version... I like to call it like 3.5. So it's kind oh. of a mix of this guy and this mm. guy. Yeah, so it's so version four and version three. Yeah, it's kind of like version, it's like this version, but he's mostly in black and he's kind of got, like, got the knives. Like, it's got the knives mm. and stuff. It's kind of, yeah, it's like the 3.5, the unreleased with never done, a, never seen a toy of that ever. It's very much Crazy. something that lives only in the comic books. It yeah. was in the introduction of that version i think around about mm -hmm. the destro must die um plot line in the comic books and yes he absolutely unveiled his v4 look but it was more muted and had the knives across the chest but yeah that was mm -hmm. a kind of a blinkered you miss it halfway figure v3 1989 has an interesting appearance in its comic book lineage because its appearance is actually kind of chronicled in the pages of the book. It wasn't just like, here's Snake Eyes rocking the new duds. <laughs> yep. He cobbles together his uniform from these three torturers, the Payne mm. brothers, uh, mm. Crispo, Torquemond, and Desaad. And after dispatches, he doesn't have any clothes. He's basically in a loincloth. Um, he's be about to be tortured by them, and after dispatching them brutally, uh, he takes various costume elements from them. Yeah, which mm. is interesting because it's like also kind of a little S and Emmy. <laughs> I'm not a fan, no, of but it, to yeah, be perfectly honest. But the fact that he's in the, sort of the bowels of the Cobra Consulate building and then goes on a one man rampage through, like reams and reams of vipers that kind of saves it a little bit for me because you can see him attaching more um tactical stuff to mm. the uniform as the issue mm. goes on so he gets the mask off the gimp crispo he gets the pants i think or the, the the pants and top and sort of gauntlets um braces what would you call them the the bands um, that go around your... van brace uh, greaves maybe anyway. no van brace here van brace. Okay. Great. Uh, gauntlet goes up to the elbow. Van Brace is on the is a bracelet. Ah, yeah, very good. So there's silver yeah. bits of bling on his forearms. He gets those yeah. from um, Desaad. And then from Torquemada, he takes the crossed knives, the butterfly knives, which is very convenient because, like, trench knives were always part of Snake Eyes' um, mythology. It's always something mm, that yeah. he had a, 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 a bit of a fetish for. It was very convenient that he um, is in the thrall of a baddie who wears a pair. Anyway, as I say, he goes through the issue and then cobbles together more and more kind of tactical gear from the various vipers that he, he kills. Uh, night vipers, in fact. So I'd like to think that a good bit of his gear is just bog standard Cobra tactical vests and stuff. Yeah, yeah probably, pretty mm. much. Something I want to mention about this specific Snake Eyes' design um, that you mentioned, especially with the knives that cross his chest. So these are butterfly knives, if you guys uh, are not familiar with the term. It's a very, it's actually the weapon of Wing Chun. Okay, um, there are a lot of, uh, there's a belief, um, I mean, uh, that uh, the whole Wing Chun fighting system is actually designed around using those knives, the butterfly knives. And mm. that uh, the version that you see without them in hand is, um, just uh, sort of a substitute to that. Um, but anyway, it's a very Chinese weapon to have. And I don't know what it is about this Snake Eyes in particular, but I've always felt a kind of Chinese martial arts-ness from it. And it does have a lot to do with the gear. Um, mm -hmm. And I kind of, like, I'm kind well, of interested in this. Stuff. because Definitely. Um, mm. The Sanji, uh, San San Sanji gun. Uh, Before we get yeah, any older, I, I have to stop anyway. you quickly, Paul, and just pause and mm -hmm. say I, I forgot to mention that it was 
the second part of the Snake Eyes trilogy, where he debuts this look, issue mm. 95, which was mm. mid-December 1989. It seems G.I. Joe at that point was coming out twice monthly. Yeah. So, yeah, this was pretty the awesome. issue. I suppose, yeah, Larry had to somehow get it into the comics. Um, and it's like, so how do we get him out of his iconic outfit? You know, just, yes, he's, he's somewhere where he doesn't have his normal outfit, so he kind of cobbles it together. Unfortunately, an he's surrounded by these guys who it. like BDSM and are all dressed Apparently in black. So. Are it, you it in would have turned out origin, Rob? <laughs> it's... It's a weird origin. It's weird that the outfit has to have an origin um, instead of him kind of like just, you know, like switching things up and being like, you know, this is the new outfit I'm going to be wearing from now on. Um, I feel like it's a little unnecessary that, he, that the outfit has an origin. It's like you just dress him in a new outfit. I think that's kind of cool. It's mm. unnecessary. It could have turned out very differently if Baroness had stayed to continue to uh, torture him. We could have come out with a very different looking snake eyes. <laughs> I see where you're going, Rob. No. Um, yeah. Well, I, at, least, at least it's black. <laughs> <laughs> I love that um, that the that this uh, look has an origin story. I don't particularly love uh. the actual origin story itself. The thing that I the things that I like is that I love that it's um, gear that he took from people who tortured him. I love that. That's very symbolic. <laughs> I dig that. It's it's very All cinematic that and sweaty ball juice. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying, like, it doesn't necessarily. It didn't necessarily have to be that. You know what I mean? Like, um, I just like there's a romantic up, uh, side of that, a very vengeful side of that that I appreciate. Mm. But when I first mm, read take the your story, skin when I'm done with you, yeah, when I first read this, I thought. Oh, couldn't that have been like a ninja clan or like a bunch of like <laughs> something that read it as them. late as me, Paul? Because I read this issue, I was in my late twenties. I was yeah, I was in my twenties when I read this. Yeah, I was mm. because it came in your. I didn't. I only had one to five of the collected trade paperbacks. Yeah, those were put out by Marvel Comics. You continued on into the IDW reprints, so it was yes. using your collection that I got to read into the nineties um, and read this particular issue. And I was like, what my favorite snake eyes uniform has what origin? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <These guys? exactly. laughs> yeah, It was a bit of a, exactly. bit of a pill, but I've come around on it a little <laughs> bit since then. I think the most key uh, media exposure for this look, however, has got to be the video game. Not so. Mm. Oh, yeah. The 1991 yeah, Taxan video game. Oh, yes, do, yes. Do, oh, do, yeah. do, 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 do. <laughs> what do you guys think of this? I think I mean, uh, I've seen it before. Awesome game. Have you now? <laughs> oh, you've seen it before. Oh, my goodness. Does anyone select yeah. anyone other than Snake Eyes as your secondary guy for any mission? Obviously not. No, this is the he's the man. You cannot choose anyone else. Oh, it's when great I'm that feeling, he got featured. When I'm feeling adventurous, I might take Rock and Roll and Gridiron instead of Gridiron and Snake you want Eyes. To level up Rock and Roll's gun, but yeah, guys, let's pour over those pixels. The knives, the sword, the grenades—it's all picked up beautifully. And here he is, mini With mini snake eyes. He's got an amazing jump in the game. Very lofty. I mean, you sail over enemies. Ah, oh, yes. Rob, do you it's have any memories to... associated with this game? I don't think so. I think I discovered it quite late. Uh, um, I think you introduced me to it, so I, I don't have much history with the game. I think I've probably seen you play it more than I've ever played it. Um, it's just cool that he is featured in the game because I mean, like who else and came out in 1989? Did, is, is Did you that know basically that? Basically, uh, it. He doesn't use ammunition at all. Yeah. He does these kind of ha yeah. Hadorkins, which is <laughs> cute and all, but like Snake Eyes' primary, primary weapon is not the sword, it's the Uzi. Come on, guys. Yeah. He was a commando be. before he was ninja badassery. Um, so it, it's a bit of a shame that he doesn't have like a weapon, weapon. But 
Hey, whatever. Well, at least they got the look right. I mean, because, I mean, Agreed. obviously Duke is just Duke. Um, we have Gridiron. I mean, when did Gridiron come out? 1989 as well? Or was that 88? Uh, 1990. 1990. Yeah. So, they okay. were so they were rocking same, yeah. a couple of new characters. Um, and it's cool that they did do that and not kind of like um, fall back on the older characters. Ah, there it is. I needed to get a power up. Oh, so he doubles up his Hadouken power. Once you power up his weapon, he can fire two key blast. fireballs. Oh, it's key blast. Ah. I love, yeah, I love this oh, um, yes. about him actually. Because it makes him different from all the other characters in that respect. That he has um, oh, non grenade attack absolutely pones. Yeah. Yep, that's I mean, how you take, take out a, a jet wow. with grenades. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. But yeah, I think also, we, we've often talked about how accurate this game is, or at least it kind of has accurate models, um, you know, towards the characters as well as the vehicles themselves. It's an absolute yeah. um, love letter to G.I. Joe, I think. Well, I mean, this is made by, I mean, this is Taxan, and then Taxan... Well, of course, is... Taxan. I mean, but Taxan, no, but Taxan had an interesting like video game history. But anyway, they were very big on trying to push uh, the NES's boundaries, like, and I think they they did quite a lot with trying to get the look of this game right, like absolutely right where they could. Mm. But it was a license thing, and I think they were trying to curry favor with um, future licensees to try and get other games, which they sadly never really did. But um, hey, yeah. To anyone That's watching like this uh, video um, presentation, just luxuriate over these pixels. It's the card art reproduced. He's not carrying his gun because obviously they wanted to kind of remove that from our collective consciousness. He's got his sword <laughs> where the Uzi would be. He's got the trisectional staff in his left hand. And it's just beautiful. It's a lovely mix of blacks and purples and magentas and greys. Even a little tasty bit of baby blue for his visor. Yeah. Nice. That might also be just that might also be a pixel glitch. Oh. Oh, how mm. dare you. Why would you ruin the you know the artistic? <laughs> no, it should I be. wanted you guys it to look be. at that because I wanted to remind us all of the final Jocon in Chattanooga twenty uh, Chattanooga Tennessee oh, yes. twenty eighteen, where the Smeltzer brothers uh, might have been Matt, might have been Chad, I can never remember, produced this. <laughs> Um, what you're seeing on your screens, if you do have access to the video, is not pixels. It is the actual action figure painted up to resemble his pixelated form. So that high contrast insane. on the blade, light blue on the goggles, the various shades of purple, deep blue, black, magenta. Hot I've seen some blue. examples of this sort of like high contrast um, painting on figures before, and this is probably one of my favorites. I've seen some Gundams actually done up to look very um, cartoon, cell -shaded. you know, kind of cell shaded. No, anime, it's wild. Mm -hmm. um, to, this effect is absolutely incredible, and it always looks fake to me, even though I know mm. it's real. <laughs> Eyes play tricks on you. A flat surface that's kind of yeah changed you know, it's, by by it's high contrast wild. paint. We've also um, seen Nika do a whole bunch of video game inspired uh, paints of like Jason Voorhees and the Predator. Yes, from various I do video remember games. those. So now we know how not to do it. Um, yes, that, that, that is also true. <laughs> they they attempted yeah. something and failed. No, the guys the guys, that, the guys that did those Joes for the comp, they did amazing work on those. Mm. They they're really good. Yeah. Shout oh, outs yeah. to whichever they're twin brother actually produced it. Maybe they produced it together. In which case, maybe they worked so together. Both. Team efforts, <clears throat> like GI Joes meant to be. It would just feel wrong to congratulate one without the other. Um, guys, mm -hmm. I have a sort of almost existential question about your playtime with Snake Eyes. Whoa. When did you first learn that he was differently abled, that he was had war wounds and could no longer speak? I'm actually not sure when that, when that would have happened. I think probably... It might have happened after meeting you. I mean, I, everything happens after meeting Stephen. Um, but it's sort of access to us was one or two comics you might have you you might have had. Um, and then probably after that point, he definitely was a speaker. Um, mm. 
and it does kind of change things, you know, I think you want to be more accurate to who he is. So I think we did do our best to kind of play him up as a, as a mute. You know, he didn't speak very often. It became a handicap mm. for whoever was playing him, actually, because all of a sudden yes. you had to find creative ways of communicating with the But it was what you had to do because everyone wanted to be snake eyes. Paul, mm. wh when do you think you you discovered he wasn't... Um, I I officially knew he I officially knew he can't speak or didn't speak or however it is um, when I was eight because hmm. again when I met David I remember David's quite a bit older than I am so he had access and he had better access to things like the cartoon and whatever so he knew that Snake Eyes couldn't speak so that was information hmm. that was given to me interestingly hmm. enough hmm. I never played David Snake Eyes was your Stephen. Yeah, mm -hmm. to a degree, yeah. <laughs> um, but I've never played Snake Eyes as a talking character. And the reason for that is because as an only child, uh, when I used to play with my toys and stuff like that, you know what I didn't make... I No, well, not just that, but I didn't make them speak. Making mm. them speak mm. for me was very awkward. So everything was like it, like internal monologues, internal dialogue. Oh, so Snake Eyes was very much in his own head all the time for me. And so your um, only other playmate was David then? Yes, pretty much, yeah, for that. I mean, there were friends and stuff in the schoolyard and whatever who had characters, but we never really played with G.I. Joes in school, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, it was always well, much like... Much like David, I was the kind of the keeper of the lore, and yeah. the lore was handed down to me on high, from on high, um, courtesy of Larry Harmer, of course. <laughs> um, my very first G.I. Joe comic book issue was... A 1992 issue from, uh, well, called, from 1992, it was issue 130, right? Mm. So that immediately should color your lenses as to, like, what my sense of history with G.I. Joe was. It was, like, very after the fact. Uh, the mm. very next issue that I got, and this was given to me by my brother, um, I think he was commiserating. Well, he, he was going to give it to me anyways, like, whether or not my rugby team won or lost. But, like... <laughs> I'm sure he, he handed it over with a sense of, of wicked glee, thinking, yeah, but you are definitely not a sportsman. <laughs> it's a con <laughs> consolation prize. <laughs> so, yes, uh, he had gotten that from, uh, I think, Cape Town's only comic book store at the time and forever, Reader's Den, now um, the employer of Robert. There was an um, in Cape Town. Uh, was, yeah, there was, but it was oh, never the easiest thing to find. Yeah, ancient. Like... Um, so the very next issue yeah. I got, because now I now that I knew that G.I. Joe was a printed comic book, I was on the lookout. Every time I was in a mm. corner cafe, I check out the spinner rack, and lo and behold, issue 108 of G.I. Joe was the issue that greeted my, my little peepers. Um, mm. It is an issue that, if you're not familiar with the number, has Snake Eyes in his version 3 look with Cobra Commander um, in his arms. He's got him from behind. He's got his Uzi drawn. Um, and in that issue, I think Snake Eyes, well, this exact uh, event does t transpire. Snake Eyes corners Cobra Commander in the Cobra Consulate wreckage, and Cobra Commander is pleading for his life. And he says, What am I asking this man for? He can't speak. You know, he kind of hmm. he has inside knowledge that Snake Eyes can't actually speak. Um, so that tipped me off to the fact that this figure, this character, this enigma that occupied my playtimes is an enigma because he cannot speak, cannot express himself like the rest of us. And from that day forwards, I lorded it over you guys. Rob, <laughs> L, Justin and Wesley, Lyle, Ooh. anyone who was playing G.I. Joe. If you want to play the guy, can't talk. If you want to play with Snake Eyes, <laughs> no more speaking Don't for you. Him. Don't do it. David and I went uh, to a, it was a function. My my parents and his parents, uh, they slept us off to some um, kind of, I, I don't want to call it a resort. It's more like a, like a hiking space. And they went to go and do like a lunch. And then David and I set off into the bush to go and like, you know, have these adventures. And Dave was always like, because he's older and he was always snake eyes. That was always how it went down. And I was always storm shadow. But even in those games, we didn't speak to each other. We <laughs> used hand signals and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that is That's super cool. Wild. That would That's be a crazy lot of dude. bullshit I had to endure with Rob and Alistair because 
<laughs> Rob was constantly cracking jokes and making light. Oh, and that's it. that's why I never chose Snake Eyes because I was like, I, I can't go two minutes without a joke. Here's the panel. So Snake Eyes oh, actually cool. has the knives to Cobra Commander's throat and says, and Cobra Commander says, Oh, <laughs> what do you want? What am I saying? Oop. The madman is mute. And then yeah, and we get a cool has, little panel. Snake Eyes has a speech bubble that has um, dot, dot, dots. <laughs> and it lives this plus, plus two extra dots and then a yeah. <laughs> point. Yeah. How, how, how do you act that? How do you act that? Is that like... <laughs> Mm-hmm. A little extra, <laughs> and remember, you and can't this issue also you had can't the. Can't... This had the beginning of the the GI Joe dossiers <coughs> in the backs of the Marvel oh. comics, and, and of they course kicked it, it off with Snake, Snake Eyes. Eyes and Cobra Commander. Wild! Oh, and Snake Eyes illustrated by Andy Kubert. Um, Yay! Currently, Ooh, cover artist on GI Joe: Real American Hero. Gorgeous uh, interpretation of the off version three. It's very, very Definitely. good. He I love to I, I like shine in the comic books. And it obviously <laughs> had the video game. But that's it, guys. Yeah. No movies, no cartoon. It's just like, well, I mean, also, because, I mean, the thing with the cartoon as well is he was never featured that much in it anyway. So, I mean, if a new version of him came around, it would just be like, mm, okay. <laughs> we don't really but feel like But his popularity was him. pretty assured. Oh, for mm. sure, yeah. And he had to figure out that year. So it is... And... You know, as I mentioned earlier, like they they didn't shy away from featuring 1989 toys, mm-hmm. Alley Viper, Stalker, Scoop, the Slaughter's Marauders figure line. Rock but I think the, the cartoon's history with Snake Eyes would, would, would kind of like preclude him from being featured because they, he wasn't featured at all up to that point. So even if there was a new version of him, they were not going to, he wasn't going to be a character that they were going to, mm-hmm. you know. Like and also the dialogue also, on yeah. Deke was not really the strongest. <clears throat> It was kind of too verbose, too wordy, too over. Yeah, no. A, a Snake so Eyes in Deke would be a terrible team. version. You know, like, can you imagine what he would say in Deke? In Dragonfire. I would characterize him. He would be quiet, but like. <laughs> but like, it would be obnoxiously <laughs> quiet. Like, it would be like. Mm, uh, not obnoxiously like quiet, yeah. Snake Eyes. It'll everything. always be like some loud sound effect. Like, you'll do like a karate chop. Or something so ridiculous. Do we feel this is the, the Snake Eyes that has the coolest selection of equipment? Like, he comes with so much stuff. Mm. Like, you know, like previous versions had like a wolf and a sword and a little gun. But like, this is the one that kind of feels even more so, I think, than version four is even more ninjury, you know? Like, mm. he just comes with, with, with the best stuff. I mean, I, I think my backpack is not, is unfortunately not the original um, because the oh, little pins on the side. Oh, yes. Is it? No, Sorry, no, 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 it isn't the original. The original broke. So my original broke because you have a little thing on the side that kind of like holds the the sword, the very cool sword, which is now to me the most iconic version of Snake Eyes' uh, sword with the kind of like uh, holes in it and the the pommel at the back. Sort of kind of like dragon a claw. Like a dragon yeah. claw, yeah. And that fits Again, beautifully it's very in the Chinese. side, oh. in the side it, of though, the backpack. Is there not something Shin, medieval Shin. about that? There is something medieval about it, but there's medieval something... Europe, I should say. Yeah, because, no, I mean, it's a straight I... sword. Although, I mean, Ch- Chinese more so than, obviously, Japanese, they do do use straight swords. It is straight it is sword, a big part edge. of... Um, yeah, double-edged yeah, straight sword. Yeah, no. Shin. Yeah, Shin. I like that, Paul. Gorgeous. That explanation makes a lot of sense, that it would be more Chinese mm-hmm. in origin. And it also guys, goes in For with, a guy who was four. educated yeah, by the same. Irish Kage in Japan, he's tended to stray away from having katanas. At least in action figure form. Yeah, mm. ironically. It could also be, mm. I mean, he was trained more to be a ninja than to be wielding katana. To Although I imagine weapon. ninjas would have wielded a katana anyway. Let me qualify the, my sword statement, sword sorry. Ones. His first two appearances in action figure form with swords were not with katanas. Yeah. He then kind of mm-hmm. course corrected, I suppose, as the law caught up. But it just tells you that, like, the designers weren't necessarily interested in staying in step with the developments in the comic books. They wanted to just yeah. design something that was cool, not yeah, necessarily something, something that was cool like looking. suggestive. And, I, and by giving him something different, it would help to disassociate him from the ninja, Storm Shadow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's actually where I, where, something I want to jump in with on Snake Eyes. Like, so he's uh, version two uses the Felchin. 
Um, mm -hmm. But that Felchen is very similar to uh, Chinese Dao. Um, and then we move on to this version, and he's got the trisectional staff. He's got the the Jin, the straight sword, and he's got the butterfly knives on his chest. And mm -hmm. I think that, uh, and he's American. He's he's a white guy. Um, so I think the designers were trying to go for a kind of a kung fu aesthetic, and still get and then still pay off on the ninja aesthetic because kung fu was very popular in the eighties in terms of like yeah late eighties. I mean, we have uh, American Ninja. I mean, tons of like exactly. very cool um, Hong Kong movies. I suppose coming over to the states influencing the way that they make their kind of more kung fu based exactly, man. Art, arts movies exactly that and then um even later on in the ninja force line when they released uh snake eyes again most of his weapons are actually chinese weapons like hmm. he's got like a, a like a dadao like a giant um chinese uh uh also sword like, but there's a better way it's, it's yeah, more like it's a machete. I know what you yeah. what you it's like a yeah. scimitar almost. It's very broad. Yes. Blade. Yeah, there's that one. Yeah, so there's that shin. There's the other, there's the big one that he comes with as well. It's crazy, man. And then like but even those the are weapons, dots, three like, weapons, and I don't think there's as much intention behind them as yeah. the earlier versions. No. But definitely who was designing it were, was very much influenced by more by Chinese weapons than Japanese. Definitely. Exactly. It can't be an accident. The cutouts. Mm on his sword and on his chest knives. I was looking at a Reddit thread trying to explain why you would have cutouts in a sword because it will lower the structural strength of the steel, making mm. it easier to break. It really is just, I mean, apart from it being like a aesthetic thing, like it looks makes cool. It lighter. Um, makes mm. it lighter, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so you can yeah. swing that thing much faster than his And opponents. changes the center of gravity perhaps. More weighted. What's cool about more, less something that something that those weapons have always communicated to me as somebody who is training um, is that those weapons are not meant to be for repeat use. It's not like he's going to like the idea of that sword is that you would use it once or twice to kill with, and maybe on the third strike or whatever it will actually break, um, mm. or mm. fourth strike or whatever. It's, um, or it's enough to defend yourself. Which is a pity because, struck, like, it, and you can it's more complex yeah. to make a blade that has holes. Mm. So it's which it's like yeah. more effort for less use. Making mm. these throwaway the blades. No, Drew Small. The sex, the sexiness of the the blades that comes with the snake eyes in particular and holes in blades. The sexiness is always that it's this well designed thing, but the reality is, is that actually a lot of the times those holes were kind of drilled in, or mm. hammered in. Or something like more like that. So it'd actually look quite ugly. It wouldn't be as pretty as like what Snake Eyes has got there. Mm. So just a just a, like a kind of a thought there. I mean, well, it's a very unique knives aesthetic on... choice, and the yeah. fact that it's picked up on the chest knives and the sword. Like there's a kind of a a, a synergy between figure sculpt and accessories, which I'm always a fan of. Yeah, yeah, that's great. It comes. It's it's a full design and. Guys, I feel like the one the one figure that we're not mentioning, the one year is the modern era version of this guy. And mm. I feel like it I, and I'm so sorry that I don't have mine here with me. It's it lives in my parents' place, but guys, that that toy is absolute gold. Like I think that's one of the best modern era figures ever released. I'm so yeah, glad that modern era Totally. It I'm so glad does, that that figure exists. I'm I'm yeah. convinced that that figure the designers of that figure had access to original production notes for the V3 Snake Eyes mm. because they took certain design elements from that Snake Eyes and were able to complete them mm -hmm. in, in in the design, the sort of original de designer's intent, perhaps, but the technology mm. wasn't able to reproduce. The fact that the knives on the chest are removable is one example. That's the most obvious. That is a big improvement. I mean, it's so cool to be able to play with those. Mm, but they do fall off too easily. So the technology still wasn't up to snuff. He has an mm -hmm. earpiece mm -hmm. on the right side of his helmet or his mask, mm -hmm. I should say. That became a swivel for night vision goggles on the 25th anniversary. And the final and most eager, intriguing improvement to me is they take the sculpt. It's difficult to see, but he definitely has a sculpted strap that runs over his right shoulder. On the yes. 25th anniversary version, they added a loop there, which allows you to attach, hook the uh, Uzi 
Yes, basically onto give that. Them this kind of carry point, the sling, basically. Which makes more point. sense than where I always attach it, which is basically to the sword. <laughs> <laughs> you nutter. Why does it have a hook? That, like, why does, why does it, it usually have, have a hook? If I can't attach it anyway, of course I'm going to attach it to the end of the sword. Uh, mm, you you're know, being practical. So kind of like I do like that. Hangs off there, which was, you know, which is what I've I've basically always done with it. It's like if he's not holding it, you know, he has to put it somewhere. And there's no <laughs> way else. How to many hook times it. I denied you being able to play with this action figure because I exactly. never saw you do that. Well, it's something I've <laughs> in my Honestly, own time. I do like the Uzi. It does have all of the furniture. For the most it's part. good and it's not oversized as well i feel you know it actually feels like it, wow. it's too scale you know i mean if, if you look at the, the original you know, this gun. 1985 uzi it does seem more mongrel but when i say it has the yeah. same furniture it still has the same like foregrip and mm -hmm. it has the same iron sights so it does have like some of the signifiers of an uzi yeah but and it has adds better scale than say many of the pistols that gi joe's can't come with i mean the pistols feel like they're exactly the same size as this, but this is much better scaled. And it's so Boot detailed. Tops. I think a lot of his equipment is very, very detailed. I mean, the backpack has tons of oh. little extras on it. The the gun itself is, is very well detailed. I like the fact that um, it's, it seems like Snake Eyes has taken what has always been his go-to, which is a factory standard Uzi submachine gun, and mm. he's now gone to work on it, added a lot yeah. more customizations. And now this is a very signature gun. With a hook I have, time. I have the weirdest um, love hate relationship with this specific Uzi. It's whoa! It's it's so cool that it hooks on. Um, it does look really good, but I really hate the grip. And mm. although I appreciate the detail, like having the the trigger guard, I hate that it makes it hard to put the gun on the figure's hand and make it look cool. Like it's always got that off kilter look, you know, to it, like. Like, yeah, it see? does kind of. It does kind of. Well, maybe that's just mine, but he he kind of does. It does kind of like go forward in his hand. He kind of like holds it. Yeah, like it always like, looks like like he has to hold it like like this. It's always like you know. The it's always like this. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I, I've never I've never really appreciated that about this gun, and I'm pretty sure that I probably stumbled <laughs> something with that before. But anyway, um, it, it's a sin that. It's something that they didn't fix on the modern era figure, which to me sort of communicates that it was never actually a problem for anybody else, that it was just my issue. I think it was um, just your issue. Um, yeah, no, definitely. But of course, but the I mean, only big problem of the so, modern era uh, version. <laughs> <laughs> if the modern era version is left, it gets better. Yeah, it works. It works out. I think the only thing they did improve in the modern era version is the sword. Mm. Uh, it doesn't have the holes in it has the impressions of the holes and they also kind of like um, so instead of having it be like a classic like you know um, King Arthur sword it kind of has like a little like zoop at the end kind of mm. like cuts um, mm. so I think that's the only thing it looks thing like that it's designed improved. to be a single blade as opposed to double bladed yes mm. and then it has like the impressions of the holes but it's not cut through so I think that's literally the only thing I can think of at least on the modern era version that's not a improvement but then you can the just backpack, you know, ignore that sword. The backpack is the logical place to put the sword. I've yeah. seen it online. Some people jamming the trisectional staff or hooking. I think 3D Joes, in fact, wow. have each individuated section of the staff like hooked over. Interesting. One That's what I do. Hangs. Uh, I never enough. thought no. to do that. <laughs> but considering the backpack itself, it's nicely low profile. Like you don't see. Yeah, it kind it's of not like a huge thing. It's, it's nice thin book book pack. Mm -hmm. He has two techie kaga. Is that what they're called? The claws. Yeah, the claws, the metal claws. Yeah, so you can yeah, climb it. better. He nice, has dude. shuriken, three of them. Mm -hmm. He has a bedroll. He has rope. And what else does Ninjas he have? Ninjas need rope. He's he got... has an absolute shit ton of darts. Yes. Yes. So not only does he have a silenced pistol, I mean gun, but he has a, a blowgun, which is fascinating cool. because the blowgun, at least, you know, I mean, through the history that I've kind of like researched about it, it's, it's generally used actually for hunting. Um, and it does occur in multiple um, primitive cultures throughout the history of, of, of the world um, and would usually just be used for hunting. And it would usually just be a pipe um, with no actual extra little bits and stuff added onto them. 
Um, specifically, the Japanese, um, they have their own blow pipe with blowgun, which they called the Fukia. Um, mm -hmm. And it was often considered to be a, a ninja weapon because obviously of the silence of it. Um, they're generally short range. They f the darts they fire, uh, the Japanese call them uh, Fukibari, uh, which I thought was a cool word. Um, <laughs> and although, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. Um, and although it is actually illegal in, in a lot of countries in the world, um, blowguns themselves, they're considered to be illegal, including the UK, Ireland, um, in some states in, in America. Um, in the modern setting of, um, of our world, um, there are actually competition um, blowguns used. So they're actually, it's, it's considered to, to be a sport these days. And you will find some of them that are kind of... Uh, modify to have like a grip on it so it's more almost like a rifle so it's easier to hold but yeah at least it, from what i i've seen i did not see a single one that had kind of a scope on it like yeah, snake eyes on it. And has on it which is what a bit kind weird. of ranges are we talking about you say close range or a short range version? so it wouldn't be the same as like a like a rifle you won't be able to uh, mm. fire it like three four hundred meters and um, you probably can get to about a hundred meters or less um Jeez. but we're talking oh, it's, like, it's, it's very absolutely silent here like, oh, for sure. Yeah, because you, it's just it, the obviously it's just your breath which is pushing this, you know, pushing the the dart out. So mm -hmm. it's even more silent. I mean, obviously, you know, we think that guns are silent when you put a silencer on them, but I mean, this is definitely the silent weapon. So I mean, not close range, you know, like you know, it's like standing in front of you, but definitely you can be at a distance on a rooftop and take out a guy maybe on you know like a floor below you. Um, so it very much is Are the infiltration darts weapon intended to be poisoned. I think a lot of, especially South American tribes, they did poison their darts um, to make it easy poison to capture their, the, the, whatever they were hunting, um, which would make it much easier because you could hit hit it. And then even if you, you, you didn't drop it in that in that moment, you know, you can still track it and, and you get it. So, I mean, more likely than not, they probably would be poisoned or at least coated in something that would um, render he, whoever he's hit with this with, with the dart. Um, I'm thinking you know, practically like it's not a kind of a one-shot kill. Like, how yeah. lethal can a dart be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Which um, is why I mean, well, well Paul, Paul, Paul has some ideas. Your lethal they dart are, spitter. Ooh. <laughs> there are no, there are poisons that can kill you in seconds, and they exist in the Amazon. And these tribes are actually known to have used the darts made with poison from some of these creatures and some of these animals mm. there's certain insects there's certain fish that just have frogs. Certain, that have poison uh, yeah frogs there we go all the poison arrow frog is a super famous one for that but yeah you mm. can die within actual seconds like yeah yeah just have and, to hit and a main vein, bro. see the use i mean obviously i mean modern darts i mean obviously would be more kind of like a bigger they kind of have like a little thing at the back that makes it easier to shoot them and they'd have an internal space to a degree that would be able to uh, uh, deliver whatever kind of like liquid you're trying to um, mm. use on your enemies. I mean, famously, I mean, there's a dart gun in almost every single Metal, Metal Gear game since Metal Gear Solid. No, no, no. Well, yeah, Metal Gear Solid used a, a dart. I mean, at least a, I think it has a dart. You've got pistol. a trank gun. Yeah. Trank gun. Yeah. Yeah. Snake, hold my beer. I'm going to use a blow gun. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm trying to practically think of how I would have used this. Had I known about it, what I know now. It's probably yeah. like a, like a, like an insult weapon. I'm gonna sneak close <laughs> enough to you to put a dart in you. It's not gonna yeah, kill but you, but not so it's close. Though, tell you, like knock you out. I could have taken that shot any day of the week, Baroness, and you'd be six feet under. So don't fuck yeah. with my girl anymore. Um, but it's definitely one of the the, the the part of his kit that I did play with the least. I think. Um, I think I might have got funny. some it's the part use of his out kit of it that I retained from my snake eyes. So, yeah, in actual fact, I think you have least. my dart gun. Ah, yeah. yeah, there it it's is. Heritage. Original guard, I, I, I didn't have the Uzi. I lost the Uzi. I lost the figure. Yeah, I um, had the Uzi. But I did keep Uzi. the dart gun. So I think this gun saw action primarily as a silenced pistol. Yeah. You know, there's an, there's I enough, imagine that's what happened. There's enough there for yeah, it to seem be like, like a pistol. Mm, get him from it's got a scope. It's yeah. got a, a pistol grip. Really long barrel, um, but <laughs> anyone who saw Batman '89 knows yeah, how lethal say, the a really long <laughs> barrel. <laughs> Knock yeah. that bat plane right out of the sky. That <laughs> um, so like 
it's on on that whole thing, like those dart guns are professional. <coughs> pardon me, the professional dart guns aren't actually huge. They're like half a meter, I think. Yeah, um, they're fairly guys, small. I'm pretty sure if you guys think back to it, you would have seen some here in South Africa because I knew people that had stuff like that, <coughs> mm. and the darts had like a little feathery bit at the end. Yeah, a little feathery like a, thing. The- yeah. Yeah, so like yeah, I mean that's I and they used to do stuff like that. They used to do blow dart shooting. I remember it being a thing. Um, yeah, it's with a some competitive people. thing, and I mean lots of countries do have their own teams. I mean it is a it is a sport for a lot of countries. The I um, think it's, competitive blow piping. I think it's a really cool weapon, and I can actually think of tons of ways to make it work. I'm just surprised mm. that it's included with the guy that has no mouth. Um, <laughs> we can just lift the mask up, you know. Yeah, oh, well, they should I, I have included that, like, it with the uh, movie version of Snake Eyes. Yeah, I, I think, think I think this mask, is a weapon. If it's a permeable yeah. enough mask, I mean, the guy has to be able to breathe. So the fabric of his yeah, mask so must could be actually like Gore-Tex like or something really breathable. So I I, I actually I, think it wouldn't make too much of a difference, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let's we'll fuck it up against. I mean, let's not lose sight of the fact that and V2, also, 1985, has lips. They sculpted. Yeah. Check it out. And also the way that it's designed as well. I mean, the, the actual part that you're putting your lips on is is kind of like expanded. So yeah. he wouldn't be uh, like sucking on the tube itself. He'd be pressing his lips up against it and then then applying the pressure from there. So it is possible like you could do hose. it without lifting up. Yeah. You know. Like some people hose. say it's awkward to get him to pose with it. I've managed some pretty convincing yeah, blowgun poses. You know, if your figure's old enough and, and kind of, you know. Um... Do you have to get him on his knees first? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that people have complained that might be a bit awkward is his three sectional staff. Ah, oh, Sanji Gun. Yeah. Awkward, but awesome. Whoa, oh, nice. Steven is, <laughs> Steven's crazy good at that. My goodness, Steven! Yeah, you just have his, to ignore the pistol grip. His, the pistol uh, grip is yeah. erroneous; it didn't exist. Blowing skills. Um, I think they had to put a pistol grip on that because it looked like that sort of sports blowgun thing, and I think they also did it because they they were worried maybe kids would think it was like some kind of weird sword. Yeah, and you would now lose it. Think it's some kind of weird long gun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The tricycle, the tricycle is so use. cool. I'm so glad we were moving they, they the agenda this. on to. Yeah. This bad boy over here. The most authentic P.I. Joe accessory I have owned. You could just put it between your thumb and your forefinger and just roll it around. Yeah. Flick, 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 flick. Flick. It's, it's, it's the original uh, fidget spinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's For those um, uh, listening, uh, Paul is sharing an incredible shot he's taken um, of oh, sure, snake eyes in a beautiful, dark environment. There's some beautiful blue and orange light on him and he is wielding his trisectional staff yay so yeah it's mid spin is that the correct and term for one Paul? Of... well trisectional yes yeah it's a mouthful okay. i'll give you that but uh, the actual <laughs> name the 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 mandarin name and i'm going to pronounce this wrong and i am going to say gun in the way that's going to sound like a swear word in cantonese but anyway um it's uh sanji uh, sanji gun or sanji gun I think it's more the correct term because the staff is just good or good. I think it is. Ah, um, and then we just call it a staff in my times. school. It's, yeah. Oh. So the whole purpose of a, of a trisectional staff, the concept behind it is that it's meant to be a close range weapon, a mid range weapon and a long range weapon. So yeah. um, I've, I've got one. some images sort of demonstrating that a little bit. So, here is using it like as a staff. So you're spinning the staff around and you turn it using it as if it's a staff with a normal spin. Then holding one the and catch. And, yeah, so holding the central section. Then here is you can hold two links. You can use the end as a flail. Um, you know, uh, I've got the flail at the end of the on the other side of his elbow, but you you, you would so use it as a flail. It forward like uh, Castlevania. Yes. Uh. Kind of thing. Yeah, so here you can like it smash somebody with this. And then the other way, um, the other approach, which is often if you guys, you can even look this up on the internet if you watch trisectional stuff, uh, Kung Fu forms, is the um, the practitioner will actually hold two of the ends in these hands as if they were weapon uh, batons. 
So you would kind ah, of bah, 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 strike, strike, strike. <laughs> yeah, kind of, but it's that kind of thing. But yes, it's it's exactly that because when you strike, then you can actually take it out and bring it around, and yeah. Anyway, it's a very, it's actually a very, very practical weapon. Um, if you think about it, that it's a very difficult ma- weapon to master, though. The, the I can imagine. Like I a, mean, if nunchucks, I mean, that's just two things connected. Those look freaking insane to, to like learn how to use. My uncle actually yeah, so, used to um, practice a lot with those, and like the number of times that he smacked himself with them was just. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this this weapon, <laughs> um, my sifu <laughs> refers to this weapon as a teenager, because it doesn't always do what you would like it to do. It does what it wants <laughs> to do, and it causes you pain. So the thing with the sanji gun is, it's exactly that. Um, it's traumatic to to practice. I mean, I've I've made one. I've made a, a one out of. Um, plastic tube and foam so that when i do smash myself in the head i'm not succumbing myself to brain damage um but <laughs> yeah man the thing the amount of times i've just smashed myself uh, just in the face with uh, one of the ends it's 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 insane i mean if anything if, if if you don't master this weapon i'll tell you this much you will be able to take a punch um mm. yeah like you'll be able to take <laughs> a lot of punches before you even notice that you're being punched. So, because I mean, you're learning a lot when you're, when you're practicing yeah. this thing. You know, you're learning the yeah, weapon, it's... you're learning more about yourself. Even as yeah, person. you're just hurting yourself in the worst way. <laughs> but it's a cool <laughs> weapon. It's a, it's a really, really cool weapon. Um, and I know that there's still a lot of Kung Fu schools today that practice it. Um, especially, um, it's, it's, I think it's a competition weapon now as well, um, in terms of like, Wushu competition. I think it's a federation weapon now. I'm not 100% sure. But, like, I have never learned it. I've only got a practice one that I've messed around with. Um, in our system, uh, Sifu might... I think he looks at me and he goes, you're not going to use a, a, tri- a trisectional staff until until I handle a staff properly. So, mm. yeah. So I don't know if I'll but ever it, learn how to use this it's weapon. It's so cool that the version... <laughs> Of snake eyes that we got came with some of the like the most unique weapons. I mean, I think of totally. the entire GI Joe line, but also for him himself. You know, he came with his generic kit, as it were, sword, a backpack, and and his awesome little Uzi. But he came with extra stuff. You know, they kind of made him very special compared to other versions that have come. I think before and after. Mm. Absolutely, you know, it worked it's on him so well. Play pattern as a child, I think, far more than, and I'm going to step on hallowed ground here hot take maybe but like i never really got much out of an included pet Hmm. like maybe it was because they were just molded slugs you know farm animals yeah like a basically they had no articulation there wasn't much character to them they felt like cheap outs um Hmm. i didn't enjoy the idea of a pet on the battlefield like how uh, how stressful to worry about your four-legged or two-winged friend when you're supposed Mm. to be concentrating on your job. Um, I've learned, I guess, since then what combat dogs do and how important they are. But, like, Mm. this wasn't a dog. This was a wolf. So I would Mm. gladly have traded Timber for more weapon options. With Snake Eyes, you got an arsenal on a blister pack. Mm. Hell yeah. Well, wait until and the nineties, Stephen, and you're going to get an entire tree of <laughs> weapons, weapons. Tree. How happy are you going to be? <laughs> I'm currently showing off a prized possession of my collection. This was gifted to mm. me by Maula Joe, and it is a carded 1989 Snake Eyes to make up That's for the one man. I lost that fateful Christmas day. Maula came to my rescue. Uh, sweet, it is a wonderful thing to have. Lovely opportunity to perhaps regard the card art and. Mm. The fact that it cheats various places. I mean, it puts the sword on the back of his thigh. You can't actually put <laughs> mm-hmm. the sword back there. Can There's nothing not to hold it. And the blowgun is kind of on his back, just stuck yeah. somehow. <laughs> wedged but, in there. But how? It's a cheat, but I tell how? you. But their hearts were in the right place, bless them, because it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of artwork. Um, and it's lovely to have. It's a lovely object in my collection. I'm not a carded collector, but this one holds a special place for me. Guys, mm. we can't really regard the plastic of this action figure without talking a little bit about what came before and what came afterwards. Mm. On screen right now, I have a lineup of version 1.5 Snake Eyes from 1983, 
version 2 from 1985, version 3 from 1989, version 4 from 1991, and version 5 from 1993, I'm going to say. <laughs> Ninja Force. <laughs> yeah. Terrible shoulders, terrible waist, terrible legs. Anyway. Cool design, though. So, 1989 is absolutely invisible. the, yes, uh, 1989 is absolutely the middle child of this lineup. And you can see some interesting changes in Snake Eyes' like, physique, in fact. I mean, 83 was absolutely just a cookie cutter. All the Joes had mm -hmm. the same build because they shared the same parts, practically. 85... I started realizing like 85 was absolutely a fetishist approach to Snake Eyes. Not only did he have this wicked way out like medieval knight's visor, but he had the latex lips. You can see his collarbone and his clavicle. I mean, his traps. His clavicle He's very much traps. the male baroness in, in, in that version. Like Very superhero. His outfit is very, very superhero, tight. absolutely. And, mm. and skin tight, form fitting. Bit of a muffin top, though, if, we're, if I'm honest. He gets far <laughs> more slim and trim in 89, where they like cinch him in with this kind of, it's like a nicely quilted, or it's a very textured look. Like what he's oh, wearing underneath the so. knives well, detailed. is some kind of combat carry um, fabric. Yeah, you can see it yes. better from the back. Yes, absolutely. Dude. The, Across that track. texture is beautiful. And that mm, texture is like, present on 1991's entry and, in fact, on 1993's entry. It's underneath this kind of like, I don't know, uh, everything pectoral armor. He's got like smooth armor portions. Yeah. But underneath all that is this kind of quilted look. So that was a, a new bit of Snake Eyes furniture that started in 1989. And I'm here for it. I like the fact that he's wearing boots in 89 with Oh, the pads. boots are awesome. Yeah, they're like they're like nice big boots. Snake, it's like the pendulum has swung the other way from the 1985 version, which, as you said, Paul, very superhero. And as I say, very mm. gimp. You know, <laughs> you can see that his back muscles on 1985. Mm -hmm. On 1989, he's wearing a lot more... Like combat stuff, like strap. It's it's almost it's almost like grenades. a combination of the first two, where it's kind of like more felt, but it's less as felt as as the second version. But he kind of has more uh, mercenary kind of combat stuff, like the first version. You know, where he has kind of like extras and stuff on there. But then he also incorporates where the direction of the character was going. You know, into kind of like a more ninjury look. It's actually kind of crazy that the more ninjury guys, I mean, yeah, they don't look as ninjury, I think, as mm. version three does, you know, mm. um, because he and does. Yeah, during less... the 90s. Well, look, if you consider what Snake Eyes in the 90s was sharing peg space with, mm. his 90s versions are actually still pretty toned down. <laughs> all things considered. Well, I mean, look Snake at number, Eyes number four. His have... fucking biceps are like huge. Yeah, it's look, like, let's take those two off the table momentarily. And I will oh, say for that sure. let's ignore those. 1989 Snake Eyes has the smallest head and is mm -hmm. shorter, a little bit shorter than his 1985 version. Yeah. Would you believe? Yeah, he's got he great proportions, like actually. Shortest. Yeah, I think so. He probably is the best proportioned of the five original versions of Snake Eyes. God. I would say. I've all I, I have a slight issue with the burly arms of the 92 version. It's not like the end of the world. I just have a little bit of an issue with it. I know why they did it. It's just to match the size of the chest and everything. And that was the time to do that kind of thing. Was to, to have you mean like... the 1991 version? No, sorry. I, keep, I, I call it 92 because I got mine in 92. That's when so. we got it. <laughs> true, yeah. true, true. So, but it's 91. Yeah, it is the 91 version. And, and also just... The 91 version, I know, and I really hope we do one of these for the 91 version as well. But this figure is like, that that toy in particular is quite hated amongst the Joe community. Um, and I think the neon weapons have a lot to do with it. But mm. um, figure um, the, what's that line? Uh, they've just done a fig zero. They've just done a, the fig zero uh, unveil of this figure, which is another mm. premium quality one to 12 scale figure. 
and it looks pretty amazing. And I think, I think, uh, I think that's good justification for this actual design. And I think maybe guys are looking at the original with new eyes again because it is a good design. But we'll get to that. We'll have that podcast in the future. We I'm will sure. have that podcast. I just I would like. Do. Hmm. Mm. I, I just hope, want I my classified version. Yeah. <laughs> you hope. Go for it. No, I, I hope that I mean that this I mean brings a lot of light to this version. Um, I think he is one of the cooler. They're all cool, um, but I think he is probably the most underappreciated. Um, but the, also, he's not as hated as say version four is. I think four is easily it's easy to hate him. You know, as you know, like compared to uh, versions cool shot, that man. came before. Um, and I think he, he's definitely one that kind of goes under a lot of people's radar. This version of, of of Snake Eyes. Love that shot, Rob. He's <laughs> he's a very cool. He's very cool, and I hope people um, come to appreciate him after um, listening and or watching this episode. Wait, is that Rob's shot or your shot, Steve? And that was all. That's all my shots. My, my yeah, those are awesome, man. Yeah, short boxes. I love yeah. short boxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, short Dude, boxes. Was was short boxes. I'll, I'll share it again. Down. Short long boxes. Please show them properly. Yeah, yeah I love that, man. Long that shot. Night Spiper is going to get it, bro. Snake Hell Eyes yeah. is um, doing that Spider-Man thing, basically, between two walls. And he's got his yeah. easy pointed down at a unsuspecting Night Viper below. A Hell classic yeah. adversaries, as it turns out. Yeah, I thought mm. it was, that was pretty good. I mean, and also, I mean, obviously, I took these pictures at night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, no editing going on here. Not a grade at all. Guys, no, um, never. As never. we as we close the chapter on Snake Eyes 1989, is it fair to rate him, compare him to his fellow fellow Snake Eyes iterations? Whoa. Um, I think I'm I think they all biased. get five stars. Mm. Yeah, I was going to sure. say I think they all get five stars except for the Ninja Force version. Whoa, that like one gets you. six. Oh. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, the man to beat is always 1985. And um, I think I, I've, I've, the argument that I'm starting to make nowadays more than anything else is I don't have to pick a clear winner because I don't have to choose. Each one of really? these Snake Eyes versions occupies their own place in history. Mm. Like if you have the OG 13 green team, it only feels right to use swivel arm or straight arm Snake Eyes. Mm. Yeah. If you're leaning into like peak sunbow animation years with flint and lady j and shipwreck it only feels right to use visor 1985 yeah or if you love the movies rise of cobra uh, of course you're <laughs> going to gravitate to this version <laughs> <laughs> look all i'm saying is if you are a bit late to the party as gi joeberg was classically um you know youth 1989 snake eyes was the one you wanted He's the one that played with that era of Joe's, the Benelux catalog era. There's a lot of cool mm. material in existence, short of an actual good cartoon series, where this would be your go-to Snake Eyes above yeah. all others. So he has his place, and my goodness, does he come with a fabulous amount of weaponry. So mm. he's a winner in my book, five out of five, all the way. Oh, of course. Oh, definitely. I also love putting that snake up, uh, snake eyes up against this version of the Ninja Force as well. Like the like all of the colorful Cobra Ninjas, I feel mm. like our version of Snake Eyes um, works very well against Every them. Every Snake Eyes that aesthetic. is only as good as the the, the counterpart. Yeah, like V one point five or V one has version one of Storm Shattered to fight, as does eighty five. So they kind of they share, they mm. share Cobra Snor share. Storm Shadow. Yeah. If you flip forward to the Ninja Force era, the later, the 90s Snake Eyes share Ninja Force Storm Shadow. Mm -hmm. But oh. 1989 Snake Eyes and oh. 1988 Storm Shadow are a the two team, team, bro. Yeah. 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 There's no sharing. They are each other's opposite number or complementary cool. number. Yeah. So yeah, because of where we were in, in and ung, my dude, in and ung. <laughs> mm. 
the Joker can only be as cool as Batman he faces, or vice versa. <laughs> Should have phrased it the other way. Uh, no. Batman's only ever as good as his Joker. Um, also, I would love a deluxe version of this figure. Like, I would love a premium. Like, if Mezco did a version of this that was really faithful, had a great um, proportion, they didn't try to mess with it too much, or didn't try to make it cool or something, I'd probably go for that. Um, or you even go wild. Like doing this guy, doing the, the orange goggle snake eyes. Yes, they are. Yeah, that's the that's Maybe the one coming wished. from. Yeah, exactly. So there's the. It might happen. One. I mean, if they're willing to make yeah. that version, there's no way they're not going to make the 1989 version. They have to. Yeah. Fit. And I'm still on. I'm on the fence about that um, Fig Zero version. Hey, I'm thinking oh, about it. Zero. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. it's I think are. it is. Um, it's three it's zero. An easy that calculation. Does it, so. It's an easy calculation for Steve and I. If it's if it's not three and three quarter inch, don't want it. Nope. And then, nope. I'm yeah. pretty convinced nope. I have all the snake eyes nope. I'll ever need. Yeah, you got um, fucking five the of them, problem. my dude. Plastic oh. willing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I do. I do have a 1983 snake eyes. Um, oh, who knows? Less. You might just turn to glass and shatter one day. But, dear listener, dear viewer. Do you have memories associated with 1989 Snake Eyes? Do you believe Shared that this is an underrated figure? Do you believe that it should be in more conversations? Or is this something that should it be really elevated? Yeah. Good for you? Mm. Let us know. Drop down in the comment section and write us a love letter. Or drop us a mail at realsouthafricanhero at gmail.com if you, if you don't want to go on YouTube. Or just send blow us, us a message. <laughs> As always, we <laughs> Salute our Patreon subscribers, members, patrons, those guys. Our patrons. They are absolute awesome. ninjas. Um, yeah. Yes. If and you've already got if you've already got this shirt and other shirts like it, and you want something a little different, like Rob's very cool G.I. Joe Berg shirt, then go and check out our merch Not store. Teespring store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. G.I. Joe inspired. Yes, this is definitely See not the a continued bad. battles between G.I. Joburg and the Snake Force. Ooh. And in episode 321, we'll be coming at you live to talk about, amongst other Ooh. things, Duke issue Duke. number four from Skybound. Mm. So stick around for that. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. So <laughs> excited. Like, I. I where we ended last time was crazy. Baroness standing over him like, yeah, we, we're going to help each other now. What's going to happen next? Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. I thought we were going to watch suspicious movies together. Oh. Oh. Yo, Joe. Holbrook. And let's get a shout out from...